27th of May, which is actually my birthday, we are going to celebrate and give God glory and praise and just come on down with it. And thank you for what he's done for these 57 years. I have 57 years old. And thank you, Lord, for it. So here we go. So the address is there. It's my regular place where I regular, it's our regular service. We're just going to kick it up a notch. Amen? So if you haven't been, y'all need to come on down to 71st and Western in the hood. And grab your steam early because it's limited steam because it's at my house. We're going to take all the furniture out. We're just going to do what we do. Amen. 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 So come on down and get a piece of the Lord with us. Okay, that's not quite about five minutes. Amen. Uh -huh. Now, look, can y'all listen? I was looking for the scripture that says lay aside the, the sin and the weight that does so easily be said because I was like, Lord, where do I go? Where do I go? So what I got is Romans. Therefore, I urge you, brothers. Can you say, therefore I urge you? Therefore I, I urge you. I mean, I'm asking you. I'm, 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 I'm pushing you. I'm, I'm, I'm really, I'm, I'm demanding. I'm like, hey, come on. I really think you ought to do this. He said, by the view, he says, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. Yeah. Hallelujah. This is your spiritual. Okay, so look, so look, the Lord told me, he said, hey, you pimping me. I'm like, wait, wait, wait. He said, you pimping me. You ever had God just drag you by, by the back of your head and say, come on, yeah. I can talk to you. So he got me by the back of my head last year in March. And so from last year to this year, actually he did it in December the year before. Now I know, and, and Reverend Lowe is gone, but you know, every time I walk in a room, I feel like I'm in somebody else's body because people say, oh, is that you? Because <laughs> it's 120 pounds later, 180 pounds for my top weight. Because God made me present my body a living sacrifice to him. So he flipped the switch. He said, every time you get ready to go preach, you go fast. I know how to fast. I put it all down. Put it out here. I don't have nothing. I just say, okay, Lord, I'll give my body to you. And when it's over, I'm going to get inside the refrigerator. I, if everybody was eating, I was eating dumb. And if I get upset, I'm going to get me something and go get up in the bed with it. I don't take it to the Lord. He said, I don't know who your God is because it ain't me. Because what you praising is that food, what you using to release, what you using to give your soul some good uplifting, what you using to bless you, amen? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and amen? Wow. You using them Cheetos and you have them <laughs> Chinese and you eating them turkey burgers and you doing them fries and, and, and whatever else you think you want to do. And every time I got up to preach, I'm like, oh, Lord, I know I look cute. Oh, I, I looked at them pictures. I said, you got to be kidding me. That ain't me. Yes. So he made me present my body a yes. living sacrifice. Because how am I going to tell somebody else God going to heal you? And I won't even give it to him. Yes. Oh, yeah, I, was, I am a recovering food addict. Oh, you ain't got to be all in no cocaine. Yes. You need to be able to do some sugar and some yes. flour. And some salt. Yep. Can't put it down. Got to have all that meat. Let me tell you what I have right now. I'm going to go fast. Fish, vegetables, beans, fruit, and I have a yam. My top weight was 358 pounds. Okay? I'm kind of going between 175 and 180 right now. Kind of between there. I'm down to a size 10. My top size was a size 32. Woo! 32. But if you are 32 and you over here, you can't walk side by side. With you can't even lay in a queen size bed with nobody else without laying on your hip on one side. Your knees up. Listen, one morning I was taking the trash out and fell in the driveway. I said, oh God, if the kids see me and they come to school, school going to be over. I said, oh God, if you just let me get all this meat up off the ground, I promise. What I did was I did what I already know. Just if you need to do it, you already know what to do. It's a program waiting for you. I went to Kaiser. You go to Weight Watchers. I don't care what you do. Whatever you need to do, God already has it set up for you. You need to just do it and stop playing. Because now that that weight is gone, I can feel this annoying right now. Now that the weight is gone, when it's time to pray, I can hear him. Because all this flesh is not so easily besetting me. The sin and the weight ain't pulling me down like it did before. Or oh, I'm the same person. This is still a body. I, I, although I really feel like I'm a ghost, I'm going to tell you, so many times I walk in a room and I, when I came in, I don't know if y'all was here, when Reverend Noah was having his service, he said, oh, would the new person uh, like to greet us? <laughs> I just looked at him. Y'all think I'm playing. Am I telling the truth? That's right. It don't matter where I go. They don't know me. That's right. 
But God knows me. Amen. And how he's blessed me and how I've God grown. That's my testimony. He said, therefore, I urge you. And if you're God's mercy, come on up with it. Give it up. Amen. Could have been dead gone. But Lord, you let me live on. Hallelujah. I thank the Lord I'm still alive. Right. I'm still Amen. alive. Hallelujah. My name is Minister Donna Sharon. You are looking at a living, breathing, walking, talking, Bible talking, devil stomping right. testimony. Come on, girl. Right. I am an individual who should have been dead and gone many yeah. times over but god has spared my life i am a living testimony i know that i am a living testimony i've never been one to speak before people i've never been one to go forth but god has a, i need you pull it on my dress pull it on my coattail pull it on me i need you to go forth for me i don't mind studying i don't mind talking one-on-one -on -one. i don't necessarily like being up here in front of you he told me to sing i'm like no you did not tell me to do that <laughs> no music he said I want you to sing that song I ended up remembering I didn't know exactly what I was going to share with you I said Lord what am I going to say he wants me to remind you remind, he reminded me I should say for me to let you know this three days before my 20, 20th birthday I was hit in a hit and run accident I was left paralyzed from the neck down, which means you cannot feel, you cannot move, you cannot eat, you cannot anything. My brothers had to take me to the bathroom. All right. My mother, because of my mother's love, because of her insistence, where the doctors were concerned, the doctors gave me over. The doctor said she'll never walk again. There was a possibility of me never walking again. But I said, I will not be laying in this bed for the rest of my life. All right. There was something that kicked up inside of me. I never did always understand certain things. My father always said, you, you, your, your philosophy is wrong. But see, now that I'm much, much older, my father is going on to be with the Lord. But see, now I can see what it is, is that God, from a little girl, God had his hand on me. He had a reason. That's what I wanted to talk to you about. Reason, season, and lifetime. All right. There's a reason why we go through certain things. Uh -huh. But then there's also a season for it. All right. And then also... It's because of a lifetime. I don't have time to really build this up. So I'm just going to give it to you real fast. Five minutes is not a lot of time. But there's a lifetime now that you got to spend in telling it. That's why I commend Pastor Vicki as always. She came up with another idea. Testimony service. I mean, we know, we know testimony services. We know about that. But come on. I know you didn't have anything to do with it. But I'm going to put it on you. I have nothing to do with it. But I praise God because, see, it used to be that we would tell testimony. Thanks be made for all men, for kings 
and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceful life in all godliness and honesty. For this is a good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have all men to be saved and to come into the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom from all to be testified in due time. As we examine this chapter, we see Paul was giving uh, instruction to Timothy, his beloved son in the faith. He instructed him first to pray for all men, pray with supplication, and intercede for kings and for all they that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceful life in all godliness and honesty. You have to understand that there were persecution at this time. The Roman emperor was persecuting the church. So Paul said, pray, because the prayers of a righteous man evaded much. That means the unceasing prayer of the righteous prevailing. Uh, Paul said, do this because this is good and acceptable in the sight of God. And his will is that all men be saved and come into the knowledge of the truth. And then he said, there, there is one God and one mediator between God and man. The man Christ Jesus, he is our mediator. Somebody hallelujah. Say he is our mediator. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. He stands between God and man, reconciling, breaking down the wall of partition, and bringing us back into fellowship with God. I'm talking about our mediator. Hebrews 8 and 6 says, He is the mediator of a better covenant, which was established upon a better promise. Where the old covenant could not fulfill, we have a new covenant. Somebody need to say hallelujah. hallelujah. That prevail. We have a new covenant with Jesus, Amen. the perfect Lamb of God. Hallelujah. Oh, it's quiet here. We have a new covenant with Jesus, the perfect Lamb of God. The old covenant, God, the old covenant, God lives in a building, but the new covenant, He lives in our hearts. Come on, somebody. Amen. The old covenant cover our sin. But the new covenant takes away our sins. Hallelujah. The old covenant stated that only the Jews can enter the holies of holy. But the new covenant said we can come boldly to the throne of grace. And help for ask for help in a time of our needs. I'm talking about our mediator. Y'all quiet. I ain't like Jesus ain't getting nothing for you. Come on now. Jesus can enter to the holies of holies. But the new says we can come boldly to the throne of grace and ask for help in a time of need. Oh, hallelujah. He's our mediator. Jesus is our mediator. Oh, hallelujah. He's, he's pleading on our behalf. The Bible says he is the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father but accept by him. He said, anybody climb up any other way, there's like a robber and a thief. He is our mediator. Hallelujah. Jesus is our mediator. Amen. Bless his name. Amen. Amen.